welcome to another broadcast of the Soul of the Everyman on the Artist First Radio Network. All past broadcasts are available in podcast form. You can find them at artistfirst.com. Want to send a question or comment in? Hit us up at DJ at artistfirst.com. And no, we're not taking down the New Year's Eve show. Here they are, the host of the broadcast, the wise ones, Michael and Margaret Lines. <laughs> you better leave that New Year's Eve show up. Uh, yeah, uh, that's your choice. You're going to take a chance. <laughs> <laughs> And and, and and we will not make a change. Uh, and, and welcome to the soul of the everyman. And I am Michael Lyons. And I'm Margaret. And she's Margaret. And uh, we're going to jump right into it because um, we are making the choice to not change the format. I don't know. That, I, you know, sometimes I try these segues, folks, and they just don't work. But I take the chance. <laughs> Always. <laughs> take the chance. And tonight's topic is... is uh, those three, those three or seven words that I've been trying to work into my opening opening statement here, which which is um, uh, they're, they're sometimes referred to Margaret as the three C's, mm-hmm. and and you can find this quote sort of all over the internet, but it, it's it's it, it it popped up in into my one of my social media feeds, and I thought, well, this is actually very apropos. Um, the three C's uh, are choice, chance, and change. And taken individually, they're all um, important, but uh, the way they're usually presented in this in this particular context is sort of as a as a as a trio of things that go that go together. And and the um, the overarching theme of of any new endeavor, and this is you know we are early in the new year here. Uh, is to make these, you know, these silly sort of New Year's resolutions. And what people are usually trying to do is to um, change something, you know. Uh, and I think, you know, in in at these moments, you know, let's call it New Year's or or the first day of spring or when you realize you can't see your feet anymore, you say it's time for a change. It's time. It's time. Time to time to do something different or. Or you know, when you reach a certain milestone in your life, you know, you you graduate college, or or you um, uh, get married, or have a new baby, or or something, you know, some momentous thing happens, and sometimes it can be uh, some momentous thing which is you know more um, challenging or or more um, you know less joyous of an event. I there's a there's a uh, sort of a sort of a deep seated uh, desire on our part to kind of make a change. And I think at those moments we're sort of usually we're we're kind of um triggered into this introspection. Um kind of saying, well what do I want to do? And then, you know, how am I going to how am I going to do it? And I, I these this, you know, this kind of vague way of looking at it is sort of codified in this in in what we have put up on the website. If it's if it's up there, it'll be there up there soon, which is this idea of of um Embracing uh, the 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 power to choose, um, you know, to in essence take a risk, take a chance, or you won't have that that change. That's the that's the essence of of this uh, of this aphorism. But I thought it was just sort of apropos. Well, it, it starts with well, this this is a new year. Actually, it's a new decade. And you immediately want something new and different at that point. Hmm. And the only way that actually happens is that you must actively choose. And it's not just chatting about it and saying, wouldn't it be nice? Or what I'd like to do. But actually engaging in it. Realizing that the choice is the first step, and then you have to follow through on that choice. How committed are you? Because do you actually want the change in your life, or is it just something you wanted to think about? Well, I think, you know, that's, before we go any further, that's that's a great insight. Uh, because a lot of people confuse um wanting something with actually choosing to do it 
or you know thinking about it and wouldn't it be nice is for the for the for the choice uh and and you said it it's the commitment mm-hmm. yeah. because a lot of people believe that talking about it or discussing it is actually doing it yeah which is <laughs> fascinating to me well and i think it there's a, there's a, a certain component uh, that we haven't brought in here. Maybe we'll bring it in a little bit, but there's a certain component to that because it's it's easy, and and you know that what they say talk <laughs> is cheap. Uh, it's easy and cheap to just talk about change, and in much the same way as um, sort of uh, you know making a lot of of noise about something, but not not actually taking any action. It it looks suspiciously like you're doing something <laughs> you know you're, you mm. can fool you can fool some people into thinking that you do well i'm thinking about it i'm thinking about it i'm thinking about it i'm thinking about it you know but you can have this sort of endless um uh you know sort of mulling it over or considering alternatives and you're right some people confuse that for the actual thing in other words just you know thinking about doing it is exhausting enough <laughs> <laughs> That's true too. You can you can actually wear yourself out thinking about it, but it comes down to whether or not you really truly want something different. And I think yes, um, but it's beyond want, you know. I think if you said it before, it's when you you realize that you're going to have to commit and. Committing is an interesting thing because, you know, people talk about commitment, you know, where you have to, in essence, uh, take a decision and, and actually do two things. Move towards something, but move away from something else. In other words, you, you're not just endlessly dithering, you know, where, where nothing ever happens and, and it's safe and you're kind of going around and around in a circle and, but now you actually have to say, well, I want that. But that means I can't have, you know, this. I want to eat the cake, but I can't have the cake. People want to say both eat and have the cake. Well, again, we go back to the fact that we are in 2020. Whole new decade. Hmm. We're just trying to get adjusted to the fact that we're (laughs) the 21st century. You know, so when you think of it, it's almost uh, something somewhat evocative about it because 2020, we all, you always equate it with clear vision. Yeah. So it's almost a, an exclamation point on the fact that this is a whole new wave coming in. Okay. Yes. What are you willing to see? Well, and let's back up a second. The the very recently there was sort of a uh, an energetic shift, and I think we all kind of felt it this last full moon, uh, and and it, it it was the first full moon of 2020, the first clear vision full moon, if you will, and people were nuts out there. You know how most full moons people are just a little bit squirrely, you know. Little... This was this was super squirrely. <laughs> Lunatic. Lunatic. Language always informs. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. But but I think you're you're right. Some of the um some of the energy that, that is out there right now is energy of well I should be I, I, I should do something. I should change. Um the clear vision, let's say the twenty twenty that we've entered into uh, means that you you can't fool yourself anymore, and maybe you know it's the uncomfortable sort of I've got to got to do it now. I feel like I have to do this now, but there's the the resistance, right? What's the resistance? The resistance is always fear. So I think the fourth C, and we we talked about this a little bit before in our in our prep time, which is usually 17 seconds before we get on, but we talked about the fact that there's a fourth C in this three C's, which is courage, which is actually really overarching the whole thing. Well, it's again, like I said, the undercurrent, the feel, 
that I'd say most people are aware of, but maybe not consciously aware of, just feels like an impulse, is that change has got to happen. Mm. And the idea is almost sublim when it's 2020. It's like, okay, well, let, do I really want to see clearly what my life has been? Who oh, knew? <laughs> but seriously, it must, you know, we, especially with all the, the uh, tools that are out there now, you can create, create any kind of uh, face that you want to present to the world. Hmm. But that underlying impulse is for clear vision. And I think one of the reasons why we see such crazy, impulsive behavior is because people are running from what's trying to bubble up inside of them. Yeah. You know, truth is like, no, run. I didn't <laughs> want to see, no. You know, what? or emotion, an emotion that you haven't processed rises up. And you, just, you, you ran from it before. Mm. So your first impulse is to try to run away again. But that usually means, because it, it's actually multiplied or, or magnified, because you shoved it under the table before, how dare it come back up? Mm. And you shove it back down again, only harder. Well, I think this is part of the process of dithering, right? Whether you're running away from the change or you're endlessly talking about it but never doing it. Uh, it these, the, the, it's very comfortable to um, do what you just said, which is to uh, you know push it back down under the rug or wherever you're pushing you're pushing these impulses down. This idea that you should be doing something, or you know discuss it for a while, and that feels like you've done something, and then you can try and kind of mollify it, you know, kind of go, well we talked about it. Uh, but there's the there's this uh, you know there's this uh, you, you just mentioned it. There's, there's this sort of burgeoning, won't be denied sort of thing that that comes up and it keeps coming up. That's a, some that's something that you must really make a decision about. You have to make a choice. Well, and it, yes, what I understand is going on energetically, um, and astrologically, I guess. But there there is going to be a lot of retrograde motions to the planets. I believe every single uh, planet, except Earth, of course. Right. Um, and the sun. The sun never retrogrades. Nope. Um, we'll be in a some type of a retrograde, and there's going to be groupings of them. In, in short, retrograde motions of planets um, energetically open the door for unprocessed aspects in your life depending upon which planet it is. So if you thought you took care of say I, I don't want to go in depth in, into it. Right. But like a retro like Say, for instance, the retrograde Mercury usually indicates that there's going to be communications bollocks or problems and things you thought you talked about with someone come up again right? because there was confusion during that time. Right. It's the same kind of thing depending upon which planet you're talking about. Sure. Your, um, whatever the issue may be, if it was Venus in retrograde, it's usually some type of relationship issue. Mars in retrograde has to do with um, how you confront certain people or issues, how you manage it. Um, Saturn retrograde has to do with whether or not you've put certain limits up and how that worked out for you. Et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But this is all happening in 2020, mm. which is a very unusual thing to happen. So what that actually does, going back to where we started, it's that impulse 
that you've got to look at this. You must look at this. Mm-hmm. No matter how hard you think you're going to shove it under the table, the energies that are going on right now are pushing for this to bubble up to be resolved. Well, 2020 clear sight. So take a look at it now. So here's the environment we're in, basically. What we're saying is, and there's many, many aspects to it. There's, as you just mentioned, astrological. So all this comes up. And and I think we can feel it, you know, as if if you are, um, I mean, just in broadly, when you're going out in the world, you can feel the crazy that's on everybody. And maybe it's on you too, but, you know, it's on, you see the crazy everywhere. People are driving nuts. People are are running around with their um, sort of heads cut off in in this environment of of, uh, bubbling up unprocessed kind of things that they feel like should, they should change. And um, to, so this is sort of, you know, the, the impetus of this, of this, um, this coming up is sort of the, 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 how do you navigate? How do you, how do you deal with this, this environment? So you mentioned that we started off with the, the idea that you have this, this uh, uh, choice to make. But you're afraid, and, and almost the almost natural um, res, uh, reaction to all of this is to run away, right? <laughs> run screaming away, get very squirrely, run, you know, talk about it endlessly, don't do it, because you, you know, you have to be habitual in your, or you know, if you if you if you are a person who does take choices and does take. Uh, decisions and, and guides your life that way. You may not feel so uh, out of place, but if you ha- are a person who, and many, many people are, who have been just kind of shoving these things away, and we'll talk about that later, we'll think about it another time, we'll talk about it a little bit and put it away again, now it's coming up. So here we are in this, I can't get away from whatever's, right. bear, whatever's bearing is down on me. <laughs> pretty much what we're looking at is that all these unresolved issues are coming to smack you in the head. Right. Repeatedly. And you cannot dodge this. Right. All the old ways of you, that you used to use to deal with it will not work this year. Right. So so here you are, you know, with the, the ocean liner of, of decision, of choice, bearing down on you. Uh, and what do you do? You know, what do you do? Uh, the, the, the key here is that focus on... Um, you, you focus on the fact that this is something that you want to do. You, you know, people sit there and the reason, one of the reasons that they're looking at these things is that it's something they actually do want to do. You do want to, you know, um, move to Arizona. You do want to get a new job. You do want to X, Y, Z, whatever it is, have a different relationship. But the, the block is either, like you say, running away from it, or, um, you know, saying, well, if I do that, I can't do this. Uh, you know, the choice aspect of it, the, the commitment aspect of it. Uh, and all these things require the first step, which is to take courage and make the choice. Uh, and, and, and if, if this one thing you were in the very first couple of weeks of 2020 in our clear vision, uh, you need to open your eyes and look at what you have in front of you without too much fear and then literally make a choice. What, what stops people also in making choices is the, is the, is the fear that they're going to do it wrong, that they're going to make a bad choice. And, um, they're going to fail. And and we've talked about this many times in this whole area, man. Uh, the failure part of it doesn't matter as much as the uh, choosing part. You know, whether you succeed or fail is not the point. The point is, in the moment, you choose to do something. You have to acknowledge, firstly, that you have reached the end of yourself, the end of your rope. Because as long as you think you were able to do something, you're going to try to find a way to solve this problem the way you've always done it. 
Okay, thinking about it the way you've always done it. And what I'm trying to say, and I'm emphasizing as best I can right now, this year is about letting go of preconceived notions of how you've always made yourself feel better about whatever the issue was. Was. Because if you don't let go and you absolutely insist that it's, it's got to be this way, it's the way that's always worked, or this is, I figured out that this is the best way to do it. It's going to come and smack you in the head again. <laughs> again, and again, and again. Just different angle. <laughs> because, yeah, yes. because the planet are dealing with different how do I say this, subject matters or um, perspectives in your life. Different aspects of you. Right. So if one planet goes retrograde and it had to do with, you know, communications and that didn't work, then some, it's going to be another planet and it's going to have to do with your relationships. If that doesn't work, then it's going to have to do with family or culture. And that didn't work, then it may go into, you know, this, it's, turning it around and around and around, churning hmm. until you're, you're able to say, okay, I really want to deal with this. Right. And so at that point, uh, you, you know, gather your courage, make a choice. Um, the, the, um, that choice, that exercise of free will, will focus your energies. You know, um, when you're when you're when you're spinning, when you're just thinking, when you're avoiding, when you're running, when you're not doing, you know, when you're not executing a change, your energies are in essence um, blocked, or or they're they're cycling around. They're 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 really they're, there's a lot of um, a lot of heat and light, but not much is going on. You know. If you feel like you are spinning, your head is spinning all the time, you literally are running away. It's acknowledging that. Yeah. Not trying to say, oh no, I'm trying to find a different way to, oh no, 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 I'm not running away, I'm really trying to deal with it. Oh no, 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 it's just... I mean, that's exactly, when you're saying those things, oh no, 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 I'm running, I'm not running away. You have to right then and stop yourself and say, uh, I guess I am running away. Because that's what you do. That's the behavior. Right. You're, 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 and the I is trying to convince itself that it's doing something. Right. And to acknowledge that this behavior, the way you've been handling it, doesn't work. No and matter how hard you try. And that's difficult too, Margaret, because that's, you know, that's, that's 2020. That's clear sight. That's sort of the introspection of really telling yourself, looking at yourself, whether it's in the mirror, literally, or, or just in the mirror of your mind and saying, you're not, you're not really doing, you're not handling this right now. You've got to, you've got to actually do something. You're not doing it when you're, when you're telling yourself that you're doing it, you're telling yourself that you're, you know. I, 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 I'm going to go back. It's not that I have to do something. That's my point. You're always, your habit form is going back into I, I have to do something as opposed to I have to be here. We're saying the same thing. I'm saying that, that when you're, when you're doing that, when you're telling yourself that I have to do something, you're spinning, you're spinning, you're spinning, you're, uh, you're not, you're not doing it. Now, I didn't You're, understand that. But well, I, that's what I meant. It's, I was agreeing with you and vi vigorously agreeing with you. Is that it, is that the that um, that energy of telling yourself, you know, or 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 the um, I'm thinking about it. I'm 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 going to do it. It's going to you know that that kind of spin, 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 spin. You have to have the clear sight to say you're not you know you're not doing it. You're just running. You're just spinning. Uh, and that is a it's a difficult thing to do because you have to do something that we do, all of us don't do very well, which is be truthful with ourselves. <laughs> you know? We don't do that well. Be 
brutally truthful with yourself. Brutally honest with your own self is difficult. Yeah. Well, it is. It, um, it requires you to uh, strip away these kind of layers of I mind, which is what I mean by the I. The I mind is trying to tell you that everything's fine. We're just, we're, we're just, you know, we don't have to worry about all this. Just listen to me and what I have to tell you. Exactly. And you'll be just fine. And you'll just don't do any of that other, you know, just listen to what I'm, I'm telling you right now. Right. And, and, you know, we'll, we, I will show you, I will think a way out of this. Right. And we don't need to change. Everything's fine. Um, so the, um, you know, the, 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 um, the I mind will, will run you away from these, uh, you know, these challenges will tell you that everything's fine and you don't have to change anything. But that the the being you, the rest of you, the vast part of you, which knows that these that change is inevitable, that y- you must grow, that you must change, that you have to deal with these things, that the relationships that you're looking for have to be, um, have to be, uh, you know, knows that that's not right. And so it will keep coming up. You know, the mind will keep pounding down on it. No, 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 down, 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 back, back, back. And it'll just go boof again, you know. And it takes uh, the mind again to trowel it all over, over and over and over and over again. Um, it, it, the, the moment that we're in right now, all that is just bursting out. You know, it's, 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 it's coming out in... In spades, it's coming out with all these retrograde planets. Is one of the evidences that that it's happening, and that um, the eye mind will will run around like crazy, and it is right now trying to trowel it all back down and pack it all down. And no, 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 back, back, back. Oof. It, it's time to silence that and be and gather courage, which is from the heart, which is from the being, and take the choice. Right. Commit. See, being and choosing and committing are all not I things. They are being things. I am. You know, the I am. I am who am. Aming or being is I am committed. I am going to do something. I am taking a choice. Exactly. Exactly. That is the point. It is only when your um, internal state goes into that commitment that anything changes. Well, let's take a change, and we'll commit to a commercial break for the next three minutes, and we'll be back. Rick Rodan fans, love mythology with plenty of action and humor? Destroyer's Blood is for you. The new fantasy novel by award-winning author Michael Lines is book one of the adventures of Dev Kalian, the Blood series. Follow Dev and his magic sword betrayer as they are suddenly attacked and forced to return to Olympus to fight in a war they want no part in. The world of men and gods is about to be destroyed by Zeus's ancient foe, and only Dev and Trey can stop him. The conflict never stops, and the amazing twist will have you on the edge of your seat. Act now while the ebook is on sale for only 99 cents. Destroyer's Blood is available on Amazon.com, Barnes & Noble, iTunes, Kobo, and fine e-tailers everywhere. And while you're there, get the free prequel. It's in the blood, available for a limited time. The Timeless Esoterica Radio Program with Dr. Bruce is broadcast on the fourth Monday of every month at 8 p.m. Pacific, 11 p.m. Eastern on ArtistFirst.com. We explore topics including the paranormal, alien life, mysteries, conspiracies, hidden history, oddities, and much more. Each show will feature a special guest with exciting and thought-provoking discussion. Always keep an open mind 
an open heart, live forever, and remember Dr. Bruce believes in you. The Fat Man Gets Out of Bed is the latest book from Michael Lines, the award-winning author of There is a Reaper. Featuring 13 original stories, this wide-ranging collection has everything. Forbidden love, gods versus demigods, weird invading aliens, sexy seductive artificial intelligence, and unusual passion between the living and the dead. All set amidst fantastic worlds of pain and loss and boundless joy. From the sublime to the macabre to the bittersweet, the fat man gets out of bed will leave you breathless with laughter, brimming with tears, trembling with suspense. Available now on Amazon.com, Google Play, iTunes, Kobo, and fine e-tailers everywhere. Hi, this is Hannah Ruth from the band Wild Hum. Check out our new Americana Soul CD, Wild Hum, at our website, W-I-L-D-H-U-M music.com and you are listening to the artist first radio network thank you there is a reaper is the story of five-year-old christopher aaron and his life-changing struggle with leukemia winner of both the indie brag medallion as well as the reader's favorite silver medal for memoir there is a reaper has more than 100 amazon book reviews and a five-star rating it has been described as life-changing spiritual a must read Just released on Audible and iTunes, this memoir is also available in paperback and on Amazon Kindle for only 99 cents. Get your copy of this life-changing memoir today. Listening to the soul of the everyman on the Artist First Radio Network. Back to your hosts, Michael and Margaret Lines. Thank you very much, Steve. Man, I'm glad you made the choice to come back to us. <laughs> <laughs> We're committed, though. We are. Uh, we are committed to you, people. You people are our lives. <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm not laughing at you. No, I would never do that. Uh, no, no, no. I'm, I'm not because we are committed to you, people. You are our lives. That was better the second time. I, well, it's, and tonight, and tonight, and tonight, because my medication is wearing off tonight. Um, yes, the uh, we are talking about the the three C's: choice, uh, chance, and change. And really, what it is is it's sort of a saying, which is if you um, uh, if you must make a choice, and if you want to, if you want to change, you have to commit. You have to make a choice. You have to get off. Of a dime, as the saying used to go, get off of, of don't you know dithering in the circle and wasting your energies. Make that choice, and um, in, in any commitment, you know, and that's the second part of this. Uh, you're taking a chance. And what's the chance? Well, you might you might fail. Uh, things might not work out. You might not, um, you know, you you might have made the wrong choice for some some reason you're taking a chance even if, even you, you have to do what's called what used to be called a leap of faith because you can't see all ends you know uh commitment in anything is is not a guarantee of of outcome in fact it's almost almost certainly not a guarantee you 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 commit to changing to making uh, you know, to to moving towards a particular new being state, but you don't know if you're going to get there, and you don't know if you'll have the energy or the or the um, you know the, the the proper conditions. You don't know what will happen. But life is life can be con- considered that journey. You know, every choice you make is part of the journey. You are you are truly being when you are choosing and committing. Those are all being states. When you sit and just dither and, and endlessly talk about things, that's an aming, that's a, that's an eyeing state. That's a I, 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 you know, it's a living in the past and the future state. Uh, if you are being, you're living in the now. If you're choosing, you're living in the now. If you're taking a chance, you know, there's no more living thing. And then when you're taking a chance, you're like, oh my God, <laughs> you're in the now. <laughs> you <know>? Right. <laughs> 
Well, it's choice, chance, take a chance, and change. And it's interesting because those are nouns. Choice, chance, change. They're all nouns. The verb that fills the in-between from one to the other is commit, Well, actually, I'll take it back. It's choice, courage, chance, commit, change. Mm. You need the verb. You need the impetus. You need courage to take a chance. And when you take a chance, you must commit to take the change. That's interesting. Well, and, and, you know, language, as we always say, informs, you know, verbs uh, and, and all the verbs are how things move. They are always about action. And we also have these wonderful things called verbs of being. Now, we're not going to start, you know, eighth grade, eighth grade English. We're not going to do that. But, but being verbs, and I mentioned one last half hour, am. Am is a being verb. Aming or being is part of being in the moment. I am is a moment thing. And you can even take the out, the I out and just say am. If you're, if you're taking a choice, you're in the moment. You're committing. You're making a decision. Uh, you don't know the outcome, but you're living in the now. The now never knows the outcome. You, you can live in the future and think about what the outcome might be, or you might live in the past and regret all the, or, you know, think of what, what happened, what happened, what happened, what happened. But in the, in the moment of now, every now is an act of, uh, rather a, a leap of faith from now to now to now. The leaps are commitments, are choices. Each leap of faith requires a commitment. You move from the now to the next now. And the part of that you don't really know, the chance part, is you don't know what's going to happen. Because life is uncertain. And for our uncertain, endlessly changing now, the, the constant comes from the heart. It comes from the heart. It's courage. Because each leap of faith requires the commitment of you, all of you, your heart, to be committed to the next thing. You know, the next moment. Courage is the strength by which you can move past your indecision. Yep. It's taking art, taking strength into your very being and moving in a direction where you're, you know you're taking a chance, but you're committed to that step there's no going back. And then change happens. Because what? it's different from what you've been doing. And remember, we, we've talked about this in the past, but I'll bring it up again. Uh, we're here to commit and change and fill that, I'm going to say it wrong, that experience bank thing that I'm going to get but you, you, you're, you know what I'm talking about. In other words... The Eternity at, Bank? The, the Eternity Bank. We're going to get that right one of these times. We're going to, but the point is, is, is those experiences, those, those commitments of courage and the now to the now, where you change, that, those changes, which are part of every moment of your life as it's lived, go into your Eternity Bank. Right. That's why you're here. If right. You, if you endlessly spin, you tell yourself in your I, I, I mind, everything's fine, everything's fine, we're just going to think about it, we're going to think about it. You're avoiding running away from change. Now, can you actually stop change? No. Change will still come and get you because change is inevitable. But if you keep running away, you're denying life and, 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 and the changes are not 
from the heart, there are changes which are worked upon you by life. And if you continue to avoid them, you live in that constant state of non-change and fear and in the past, you, you're not filling up your eternity bank. You're, you're denying it. You're, you're living a parsimonious life, which is driven rather than committed. Right. And for those that don't know, don't know what the eternity bank is, it's just a phrase that we've coined to describe experiences that you have that are lived fully in the moment of here and now, the eternal moment. These mm. are memories that your heart and the rest of you have so fully participated in that that experience, that memory is so vivid, it's like you're reliving it again. And that is what's in your eternity bank. Memories that are so vivid that there is no difference between when that experience happened and now. Hmm. Because it is in the moment of now, always, and forever fresh. And the, the eternity bank moments are a bank of experience where you've registered a life and you've burned your flame, the life of your, your existence burning like a flame in the moment of now. Mm -hmm. and it's understanding that when you do that, when you participate in life so fully, you are putting together a soul existence that goes on throughout eternity. It is something that will always and easily uh, can be looked at by your soul. Because it is written in the moment of now. It, and to unpack a little bit of that, there's there's three beautiful things here. One is all that is what goes into your life review. Mm -hmm. You know, and people have had, uh, we've talked about people who have had NDEs, near-death experiences, and they, they go through those, the moments that they go through are not the moments where they pay their bills or their taxes on time. The moments that they go through are the eternity moments, the moments that needed to be looked at again um, and they are part of your life review if it's a life full of now moments it is all of them are eternal they are just as fresh when they are reviewed at the end of your life as they were when they happened now you get other insights too and there we won't go into that the other thing that, that came up in that that I, I loved in that statement you just made is is that you mentioned the the power in essence of now and that reminded me immediately of Eckhart Tolle and that whole idea of living in the now moment. Um, the other, you know, the thing that, that is always talked about with animals, and many people who handle animals, is animals live in the now. And we see it, dogs and, and other animals, our pets and the, and the creatures that are around us, don't, don't, they don't know how not to commit. They haven't reached this enlightened level that we have where we can figure out to dither. Animals... <laughs> You know, animals commit. They live in the now. Now is good. Ice cream. Now is bad. Rain. Now is good. Ice cream. You know, it doesn't matter. It doesn't, it's, it's like, it's raining. I feel sad. No. Ice cream. Good. Rain. Bad. You know, <laughs> you know fire. Good. I mean, no, it, it's, it's the, 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 the incredible cleanliness of living in the now means that you don't carry uh, this this kind of dithering living in the past or worrying about the future. You live in the now and you commit and live and commit and live and commit and live. And, and children do this. Children at a young age, they, they commit and live in the now. Everything is a wonder. Everything is just good. And if it's good, you're happy. And if it's bad, you cry. And if it's good, you're happy again. And that instant of crying, you know, 10 seconds ago you were wailing your heart out and somebody give you a lollipop and you're like... <gasps> It's good. It just turn them off. You know, white waterworks are off, and everything's great now. Well, mm -hmm. we learn ourselves out of that when the, we let the I mind get in there and pilot us around. Uh, 
but the, the the amazing cleanliness of living that committed change life now life gets Un, you there. uncluttered uncluttered the uncluttered mind where you don't keep putting all these little bits and pieces in thinking that you might need to to uh analyze it later Completely engaged in the moment. You're committed in the mo- to the moment. Mm. Completely engaged in the moment so that the fullness of the experience registers on your soul. Mm. And in doing that, it opens the door for the spirit aspect of who you are to truly begin to inform you of or a reminder of the fact that your true state is that spirit state that happens to be engaged in this plane of existence. And again, we said it before, your soul is the intersection of your spirit with this plane of existence that happens to be encapsulated in this body. Hmm. Which is why I believe that the term that this body is the temple. Hmm. A sacred a sacred existence to be able to do that. To have the, your eternal spirit be able to express on this plane. It's amazing. And when you do see little children, they're completely there. Mm. And it's completely uncluttered because they're here to experience life. Not here to to formulate what they believe should be happening. Right. And, 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 and somewhere along the line, we lose that. You know, we, we, we do get away from our... We all were born with exactly that amount of of real living, you know, as a child. Somewhere around the line, we, we lose that, we clutter ourselves up, we we pretend we're doing things, just and all we're doing is spinning, and we're not committing, and we're not living. But what is and, it? But then, then I was going to go back, then we have these moments, you know, these moments of 2020, you know, something happens, and it just wakes us up a little bit, and we have the opportunity to say, oh man, I should be, I should be doing that. And that that is a is 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 a a call from the bubbling up true self, the the self that you were born as, the you that was then is still the you that is now. You've learned your eye has learned to clutter it up and cover it up and mm-hmm. deny it. And and at those moments of introspection, and 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 you can just take this one, you know, this twenty twenty clear vision, but there are many many many. They're always there. You have to do what we said you know, before is, is take the clutter mind and push it away. Take it uh, a choice, a commitment with courage. And, and you'll, you'll instantly be in the moment. I'm going to do the thing. Take courage do it. I am doing it. I'm going to take a chance. I'm not going to let the, the I mind oh, it could be this, it could be that, we might, something, it might, blah, blah, blah. take the quiet choice to do it. When a child takes the choice to do something, they don't think about whether to fail. They try it, and they fall down, and they cry, and they get up right away, and they get right back up and try it again. Because they want to live to the next moment. They want to take the commitment, take the chance, change. It's still there. It's still you. Every moment that it, it bubbles up is an opportunity. It is that impulse to learn to walk. Hmm. You know, you um, how many times have you fallen? You thought you were balanced on, on your feet? No figured out that there's a certain way of doing this, carrying yourself, 
get up again and again and again, even though they fall. The very basic thing that we as human beings are programmed for. What was it? The, one of the um, science shows was saying that humanity had um, learned that it may not be the swiftest, and, and we certainly aren't, we don't have natural weapons on us like claws and teeth. Mm. But what man did have was endurance, and it could run down its prey. Mm. and continue and continue to run and run. And the swift animals, they're spent, and they collapse, and they don't get up. Mm. But man was able to get up and continue. That's what we were built for, to be able to get up and continue after whatever the goal that's been set in front of us. And it's usually a very obvious goal, much. <laughs> the more obvious, the better, in right. many cases. Well, yes. But it, it's acknowledging that. I don't think people acknowledge that within themselves, that they were made for the long race. Hmm. That's why man was meant to heal. He wasn't born perfect. But you were given the ability to heal. That usually means it's a long goal. Mm. And, and what you said before, you know, the, the fact that we are uh, embodied, you know, the spirit embodied in this in this physical existence, uh, that long haul, which, you know, what is it? it? It can be anywhere from, you know, 100 years or whatever it is, 80 years. In most cases, not in every one. During that long haul, you're here to commit, make a choice, take a chance, and change. So the the healing part of it is because commitment and chances mean sometimes you're going to fall down. You're going to mm-hmm. get you're going to get hurt. Things aren't going to go well. You're going to you know just just have some damage. And I think there's a, there's unfortunately too much in the world today is about holding on to the damage right. and endlessly dwelling on the fact that I fell down yesterday and then I remember the next day that I fell down two days ago. I remember the next day that I fell down three days ago. And all you're doing when you, when you remember all the damage is you're spinning. You're no longer you're, going forward. You're looking backward. That is the clutter. That's the clutter of a part of it. Part of it is worrying about the future, but a large part of what people get spun up in is is the, I hurt myself when it was 17 years ago. I'm like, really? But yes, that part of our our un- unfortunate makeup is that we remember past hurts and bring them into the future, but that doesn't get you to the next am moment. It keeps you in the past. What I'm reminded of is, you know, we, and we've all, we all know people like this. Mm. They get into a relationship, they wind up marrying somebody, if they think is ideal, and then it goes down the tubes. But they wind up, when they date, start dating, and they start marrying again, it's the same kind of person that they're going to. And then that goes by the wayside, and they try again, and it's the same format not realizing that the change that they're looking for is not external, but an internal. Hmm. Well, right. Um, But I would say two things for that. that Not only are they repeating, which which part of spinning is repeating, because you're going around and around and around, but they're also not, you know, when you commit and, and take that chance, you're also supposed to change. What's change really? Change is learning something. It's taking something away. It's internalizing something and growing and becoming new. The child that continues to try to walk and fall down eventually walks. They learn by continually walking, as it's falling, to actually do the thing. Correct well, the balance. Well, right. And the balance is very key because mm-hmm. the, the balance of your heart is what's making you repeat this same failed relationship. Or the because imbalance. Right, because you haven't taken 
the actual change part of it, which is, that hurt. I fell down. I'll take that change into me, and the next time I'll go through, I won't have to do that again, because I've already done that change. Well, it's first, the first step is taking responsibility. Right. Well, that's, 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 in, that's taking it in. Well, that taking it in means acknowledging that you are responsible for your own internal well-being. No one else is. Marrying someone because he makes you or she makes you happy is not a reason. Hmm. But 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 that's the what you just said is the absolute key point. Because when you when you take it in, when you take the responsibility, what are you doing right at that moment? It's like the twenty twenty vision. You're actually looking with clear vision at what really happened. You're being what we said before in the previous half hour, honest with yourself, truthful, and saying, "Yeah, I took this." I, I now know what I did that caused the hurt. I I know what I did that I can do to to grow and change, put it in my eternity bank, and and then I can go to the next. And and that's still you're not you're at the end. You're not perfect. The next choice, next commitment, next change. I have had this experience where this is negative. And what do I need to do to become true? True. Exactly. I am, I am off my own truth at this point. Who I, who I am. I am not true when I've gone through this. So I must return to true. And returning to true is allowing the heart to have a voice and say, yeah. Mm -hmm. You're selfish. You are only thinking of yourself in that particular moment. This must change. Or whatever it is, but that's a great one. Just saying it's as an example, but it comes mm. back to that. Yes, and, and, and that's it. I mean, in, in the, in the summing up of, of choice, chance, and change, they're all nouns that require you to be the verb. Be the yeah. action. Take the commitment. Take the chance, the risk of failure. When you're done, change, which means take responsibility, look at it, bring it in, put it into your heart, use your heart, the eyes of your heart, and 2020 and the rest of your life will be, will be, and I am Michael Lyons. Mm. And I am Margaret. And thank you for listening. Mm-hmm.